us three are all exercise science majors and we'll all just be given like a 10 minute presentation. So the topic I chose was motivation to exercise and change your behaviour. So just a brief introduction why I decided to choose this topic. Um, exercise is an important aspect towards living a long and healthy life. Uh, the physiological and the psychological benefits that come with exercising and trying to increase uh, your life expectancy. Just some statistics, 60% of Americans are not physically active on a regular basis and 25% of uh, Americans are not physically active at all. And for the people that do begin an exercise program, 50% drop out within the first uh, six months. Obviously there's a motivational issue there that they're not following through with the program. Uh, so some just uh, definitions quick. We have a motivation, which can be defined as a complex set of internal and external forces that influence individuals to behave in a certain way. And then self-efficacy, which kind of ties into the motivation. Uh, one's belief in their ability to succeed in a specific situation or accomplish a task. Quite Pandora, which I guess you two have heard about. So self-efficacy is important because it can count as much as 25% of the available possibilities for explaining an individual's behavior. And that's from uh, the American College of Sports Medicine. So to begin off, how self-efficacy self comes with one of the best ones in this book. Oh well. <laughs> <laughs> so this Look is out. like really basic. So yeah, just so you just want to get Perfect spine. Perfect. So, based on these four components, uh, I would say you'd had fairly high self-efficacy in that. So it's based on past performance. Done yeah. that before. Done it before. <laughs> so obviously, if you've done it loads of times before, then you're going to be confident in that skill. Observing others, watching people on TV, uh, mainly if you watch people same levels, you can just see them do it. You're like, well, if they can do it, so can I. Social persuasion uh, coming from people like parents, coaches, telling you you can do it. And then physiological arousal. Uh, some people, when you put them on the spot, like sweaty hands, get shakes, they don't <laughs> like that feeling. But also, like uh, people that go to the gym and work out, uh, might feel sore after. Some like that feeling, some don't. So, depending on that, that affects whether your self efficacy is going to be higher or lower. Uh, just a quick study they did. Um, they looked at a correlation between exercise and self-efficacy over five months in uh, non-active individuals, both male and females. Uh, there was 103 participants. Uh, so they looked at exercise behavior, which was measured through class attendance, intensity, self-efficacy, and physiological indicators, which is body confidence, aerobic capacity. They took these uh, measurements at the third, twelfth, and 20th week of the exercise program. So at the start of the program, participants with high body fat levels had lower self-efficacy. Obviously, they're engaging in an exercise program. They might feel uncomfortable because they've never done it before. So that's probably why their self-efficacy was low. At the week 12 of the program, self-efficacy was found to be a strong predictor of exercise adherence, so like following through with the program. Uh, 20 weeks into the program, the strongest predictor uh, of continued exercise adherence was participant exercise attendance and intensity of week 12. So you can see like the correlation between having high self-efficacy and following through with the exercise program. So now you know a bit about self-efficacy, how do you increase it? Um, using past personal experience, using the saying, if I've done it once, I can do it before, I can do it again. Um, you can just call on any time they may have been physically active and if they had a positive experience through that, then you can recall on that and that might make them want to start up again. If they've had no experience, it's important to focus on goals set and to create mastery experience. That's just kind of, if you're, you're confident in yourself of being good at that specific skill, obviously you're more likely to do it because you do stuff that makes you feel good. Um, so then coming into goal setting, you want to develop realistic short-term goals that can lead to easy success because you want that uh, instant sati satisfaction after you work out. Um, so we use the acronym SMART, which stands for Specific, Measurable, Achievable, Realistic, and then Time-Based Your Goals. 
So yeah, this initial success will, success will create a master experience for the exercise and increase self efficacy. And then uh, training logs. I know a lot of personal trainers get uh, their clients to do this, just so you can look back and see how well you're progressing and look at your start to finish. It makes you feel really good about yourself. And then this is just a graph um, table coming in from the four components of self efficacy and just giving some examples of other ways to increase it. So relevant experience, uh, becoming more competent because you see someone else doing the task, becoming more confident because someone else convinces you that you have the skills, and the energized state which you get from working out. Um, I just thought this was pretty cool to look at because um, for every behavior we have, we're somewhere on this uh, circle, I guess. Um, so. For example, either going on a diet or, uh, let's say, a gym membership. Um, so stage one would be pre-contemplation, so no recognize of need for or interest in change. Uh, stage two is contemplation, so think about changing. This is where you just might have the first initial thought, oh, okay, I need to go to the gym and start exercising. Uh, preparation is planning for change. That might be looking at your local gyms and looking at the prices of memberships, or going for like your physical exam. And then four is adopting new habit. This is where you're first trying it out. That's where you want these short-term goals to really motivate you to follow it through so you can get to stage five, which is ongoing practice of the new behavior. And then I was reading in one of the articles, they talked about the habit loop, which is um, based on every habit is formed by a cue behavior and a reward. So if we're going to the gym, the cue could just be the time of day, six o'clock when you get home from work or something like that, or you just had dinner. And then the behavior is going to the gym itself. And then the reward will maybe, depends on the person, it could be the feeling of being tired after going to the gym, knowing you've burned some calories, or um, achieving some of those goals that you've set. And then lastly, just recommendations. I put this in because uh, I remember I struggled to get my dad uh, physically active. And maybe you have kids and you want to, they're not really engaged and you just want to think of ways you can do this. Um, so I put, don't throw them in the deep end. What I mean is if they're in like group classes, but try and find uh, a level that's similar to them. If they're a beginner, put them in with beginner classes. It's pretty demoralizing being in a class and everyone's a lot better than you. Um, and then these tie in working, uh, working out with friends, um, just to like a confidence boost. Uh, if you're trying things out for the new time, it's always nice to have a friend there uh, with you. Um, establishing a role model, especially if you, they want to get into a specific sport, having someone they can look up to and mimic is a great way for them to try and stay in sport. And then uh, that ties in with taking them to the athletic event as well. Um, educate them on the benefits of exercising. Um, if they don't know what they're getting out of exercising, they're less likely to want to put the effort in. And then, again, with the goals, uh, setting short-term and long-term goals and track the progress so they can see the rewards. And again, that comes into motivating them and being able to reflect and see how they're doing. I think that was the last one. Yeah, that was the last one. So you said you were interested in getting your father to exercise more? Yeah. What what strategies would you use with him? With him, I he was wanting to lose like stomach, but then he would not work out at like a high enough intensity and his diet wasn't great. And he just really wasn't educated on the kind of things he could do to lose that. Because he used to play soccer so he well. 60s, so like, some, of his, some of his strategies were not great, so I went with him to the gym and took him through uh, different like cardio events he could do to lose weight, and yeah, he seemed to get a lot more motivated with that, and I just gave him more variety, he seemed to get bored because he was doing the same things over and over again. I think em emphasizing like immediate benefits of exercise about the way it makes you feel like right after you exercise, you talked about kind of being sore yeah. or finding finding ways that are re finding reinforcers for exercisers that 
are more immediate as opposed to like long term. Yeah. Because that's that's next week. That's in ten years, whatever. But if I exercise now, I'm going to feel great. You know. So emphasizing those, I think is I think is super important to get people to into exercise and maintaining exercise. Um, and then the other the other observations last question that I had was about the self-efficacy model. There's some there's some uh, uh, versions of Bandura's model that also include visualization, yeah. um, and then that differentiate persuasion from persuasion from others, and also self-persuasion, like yeah. self-talk. Like yeah. yeah, and is that a social thing? Is it yeah, like, yeah, yeah, it, yeah, it has to deal with that, <clears throat> and then the arousal. Um, looking at kind of regulating emotions, yeah. and that as a form of arousal, in addition to um, bodily arousal. Yeah. So there's there's some there's some good models out there that have several more factors that might be beneficial that you could maybe tap into if you're looking to change your dad's exercise or I remember other looking at that because the uh, inverted U hypothesis is like where there's an optimal level of arousal because mm -hmm. he's a pretty calm guy. So I think he tried a personal <laughs> training, like trying to get high tough. It's just like, this is influence. Individualized zones of optional functioning, yeah. you know, and we all have we all have those different zones, and his might be higher than somebody else's. There's so yeah, there's so many complexities to it. Yeah. So oh sorry, um, so you're you're thinking about motivation and motivational strategies, and many of us wear fitness trackers and the technology. Yep. And so, what do you think about that as a motivating tool? Is that helpful? Like, is it? I mean, and for what populations might that be best? I think it's so like Fitbit is the one I use. Uh -huh. That's great for me because I play tennis, so I like looking after a match and just syncing it onto my phone and seeing like how many calories did I burn, where did my heart rate be. I mm -hmm. just like knowing that information. But then also getting like, the reminders for people that aren't as active, mm -hmm. saying like, hey, go on a run or something like that. And just you get like the email saying congratulations, you've done so many miles. Just that like instant gratification, I think, really helps people. Mm -hmm. And it can appeal to all ages. Mm -hmm. It's number one on ECSM is technology pieces. Mm -hmm. ECSM top trends is 